said, he's the leading national voice for the progressive movement to really become one. Um, and anyone who's ever set foot on Twitter knows what a force he is. Uh, and he's recently also become the source of attack from the neoliberals who are getting so nervous uh, of, about our work. Uh, and so they've been, uh, they, they've kind of made uh, Ryan the punching bag and the one who they come after um, because they have nothing else to say. And so Ryan, it's amazing to have you on. It was amazing to have Susan Sarandon come out and to, you know, and, and, and like forcefully, you know, defend you while you were in the middle of that. And it's just in general, yeah, awesome to, to be working with you. And first, I just want to thank all of you guys for all the work that you're doing. Um, you know, I, I haven't felt a lot of hope in our country. You know, I, I just feel like we deserve so much better than this. Um, and to see so many Americans that are, uh, that realize that too, and are fighting for something better, fighting for the government uh, and the America that we deserve, it is very inspiring. So thank you guys for doing the work and for showing up and, and really helping build uh, something that I think will uh, truly transform this nation, you know, and, um, you know, it's when I was watching the debate last night, you know, I had this, I had the same unsettling feeling when I was watching the, the previous debate that there's no voice up there for the working class. There's no voice up there for communities of color. There's no voice up there for the planet. You know, it, it's just, it's two corporate elite parties that are there to govern for Wall Street and giant corporations and the ruling class. And, you know, in this moment in our history, when there is this much inequality and this much injustice, for our government to continue to operate under this kind of business as usual, it is so unacceptable. And for the Democratic Party, a party that I was a member of for 18 years, I bought the hope and change platitudes and, you know, just vote for us this time. We just, we just, we gotta get rid of the Republican president this time, but next time we'll have meaningful change. You know, no, like enough, you know, we deserve so much better. And um, there was a moment where Mike Pence had the audacity to say something along the lines of like, um, he's like, yeah, you know, of course, we, you know, we're, we're, we're getting through the pandemic because the, the people are making such great sacrifices. And it's like, no. The, the people of this country shouldn't have to make great great sacrifices and wouldn't have to make these great sacrifices if we had a government that was on our side. And that's really what's missing, you know? And, and I truly believe like, you know, no matter how much money you make, you deserve to live a life of dignity, you know? And you deserve to be treated with respect and compassion. And, and right now that is completely absent from our leaders, from our government. And so, um, you know, I was, I was very involved in the primary process. I, I, I voted for Bernie in, in 2016. Um, and when this process in the primaries, and then I, you know, like a good Democrat, I got right on board for Hillary. Um, but this cycle, you know, it's different. Like I'm, I'm not voting for Joe Biden. I, I refuse after seeing how they treated Bernie, you know, once again, you know, Obama making that phone call uh, three days before Super Tuesday to get, uh, you know, Judge and Klobuchar out of the race and basically clear the lane for Biden. Like, it's just enough is enough. Like, and, and I also think to myself, like, any progressive who thinks that the Democratic Party and the DNC is ever going to give a truly progressive candidate a fair shake in a primary wasn't paying attention in 2016 and wasn't paying attention in 2020. This party is not democratic. They, as, they espouse that they're democratic, but any party that is, you know, trying to kick other parties off ballots, like they're doing with the Green Party, or any party that is demanding blind obedience and silencing any dissent, you know, any party that is, that is you know, on one minute says healthcare is a human right, yet during a pandemic uh, will not fight for Medicare for all, for the policy to make healthcare a human right, you know, any party that during the climate crisis won't ban fracking or, you know, won't end the fossil fuel subsidies and, and, and won't support unequivocally a Green New Deal is not a, a, a democratic party and a party that is for the people. And so when I finally kind of woke up and was like, wow, like <laughs> this party is not on my side how I thought it was, you know, that was a very scary place to be.
but then I met Nick. I, I invited people like, you got to meet this guy, Nick. And I had him on my podcast and we had this conversation that was an hour long. And, and I was just so inspired by what he was saying and what he was saying about the people's movement and knowing how it started from, you know, what Bernie started in 2016. And that's kind of what brought me on board. And, you know, I, um, I think that, look, like this is about, this is about building something that, uh, and building a party that puts, you know, the dignity of, of, of the people and the working class over the endless greed of the ruling class. And it is time for that in this country. Like enough is enough. And, you know, look, I, I, as Nick alluded to, like, because I speak out very loudly and because I have a platform and I've unapologetically supported the People's Party, like I have been attacked, you know, I, I, I'm in recovery. I'm nine years sober from, you know, drugs and alcohol. And uh, a DNC operative had the audacity to dig up my DUIs from 20 years ago and spread them on Twitter two weeks ago. But, you know, I've learned, you guys have taught me about solidarity and, you know, they're, they're attacking us personally. They attacked me personally because they can't challenge our ideas because deep down they know what they're doing is wrong. Any party that is allowing this much suffering to occur and allowing, you know, people to die because they don't have access to, because they don't have health care that is allowing the climate crisis to continue, you know, and not supporting the bold policies that we need. You know, all of this suffering is a choice. It's a political choice they're making. They're choosing to put their corporate donors over the basic needs of the people. And because they know they're wrong, the only thing they can do is attack us personally. So, you know, I was so grateful that Susan stood in solidarity with me, that Nick stood in solidarity with me, that the movement for People's Party stood in solidarity with me. And one of my best friends called me and was like, look, like you got those DUIs 20 years ago when you were 18 and 19, you've been sober for nine years. Like you have nothing to be ashamed of. Like that, if that's what they're gonna do, that says more about them. And you know, at first it's a little unsettling, but you know, I just, I have, I am so proud to be a part of this movement. I'm so proud to be fighting for justice. I'm so proud to be fighting for the America that we deserve that I'm not gonna allow any DNC operative to shame me and I'm not gonna back down. That's what they want. They want us to be afraid. You know, they want us to think that, you know, we need them. You know, they want us to think that like they're the only path. And you know, this cycle really showed me that like, look, when there's this much injustice and Trump is not gonna win, I mean, newsflash, Joe Biden is going to be the, the next president of the United States. It's it's not an either or like, yes, I get it. Trump is bad and Trump is scary, but like that's not a vision or a plan to move our nation forward. They are literally in a very sinister way. They are weaponizing the fear of Trump to thwart and stop any meaningful policy changes. Like you can run to beat Trump and fight for Medicare for all. You can run to beat Trump and fight for a Green New Deal. But the Democratic Party doesn't want to do that, right? They just want to get rid of Trump go back to 2016 and pretend like, you know, everything's going to be magically okay, but we know it's not going to be okay. We know our communities are suffering. We know that the working class is falling further and further behind. We know that we have racial injustice in our streets and, and we know that they'll say black lives matter. You know, they'll, they'll say the platitude, but they won't support, you know, defunding police and shifting resources into black and brown communities. You know, they'll continue to do this performative lip service, but they won't fight for the systemic change that we need to move our nation forward. So we're at a moment in history where enough with the platitudes, if they're not gonna, you know, if they're not gonna represent the people, then we are. And we are, and that is what this movement is about. You know, I, um, I love that we were uh, outside of Jeff Bezos' house last weekend in LA. You know, like this movement is about showing up in our communities, being on the ground. And then as we take it forward, we're gonna shift into an electoral movement. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had conversations with Nick, like, I really think we have an opportunity to build a coalition of white and black and brown working class people that just want a fair shake and, and, and want a system that is not rigged against them. You know, for, for the last half century, the working class has been carrying this nation on, on our backs while the rich keep getting richer and the billionaire class isn't paying their taxes and Wall Street's continuing to, you know, get richer and, and it's like enough, you know, we understand the system is rigged and now we're going to go unrig it. 
And uh, you know, so I'm just, I'm humbled to be a part of this movement. Um, I'm so grateful for all the work that you guys are doing. Uh, and I know that like, they're gonna come for us, but if we just remember like what this is about and fight for our values and, and, and stay in solidarity with each other, like we're gonna be all right, you know? And um, so I'm, I'm hopeful uh, again, and uh, I'm just, I'm ready. I'm ready to break the duopoly and to free this nation from corporate rule. You know, we all deserve better than this.